Good morning. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Uh, we so appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to come and visit with us and talk about the Minnesota Kids Code. I'm State Representative Kristen Bonner of Maple Grove, um, and I am the author in the house of the Minnesota Kids Code. Uh, my co-author, uh, Senator May Quaid, and the legal side of our team uh, was unfortunately not able to be here this morning um, due to a kiddo emergency. She is on mom duty. Uh, that's kind of how it works here in the legislature. It's a team effort. Um, but I have spent 30 years in the tech industry. And I am uh, I am an agilist, excuse me, an agilist and an evangelist for tech. I am the only legislator in the country at this time that actually leads a team of professionals that developed software products. Uh, that makes me uniquely qualified to be the lead on this bill before you. Uh, we have seen bills across the country that are great on intent, but terrible on the tech. And frankly, they don't keep kids safe online. I've shut, uh, seen everything from shutting down the internet between certain hours of the night, <coughs> as if that product can't harm kids during the daylight. We have seen us try to say that children under the age of 16 can't access the internet. Have you met a teenager? <laughs> Good luck with that, right? Um, and you know, the reality is, I have to tell you that we don't know, and I don't know, how in God's name we are going to implement these solutions or how we're going to enforce them. They look great on a flyer, but they don't move the needle to protect our kids. And I am here today because I don't care about the politics. I care about our kids. Let's be blunt. Online products are designed to prioritize profits over our kids. Harmful products are harmful products, period. We can't allow big tech to legalize their way out of this problem with confusing controls or that make it impossible to protect kids online. And we can't expect parents and grandparents to become tech experts. That's just not reasonable. And I've seen all the solutions that fail our kids. And I believe in the promise of tech. As someone who works in the industry, I know what's possible. And that is why I am confident that the Minnesota Kids Code is the right solution. It's right on the intent, and it's right on the tech. It is the only solution that compels companies to set the highest privacy settings by default. It is the only solution that pairs that and targets the root of the harm in the design phase before the harm can be done. It compels companies to design better, safer products through the lens of child safety, like any other product on the market. We have given tech a pass for far too long. It's time for that to end today. We must hold tech accountable and responsible for their products. We can build better, safer products by design to keep kids safe. Minnesota is uniquely positioned to be a leader here today. The Minnesota Kids Code is the best solution for business. It's the best solution for parents. And most importantly, it's the best solution for kids. And with that, I have behind me a plethora of folks who can get down into the weeds on this issue and talk about their stories with online products and technology and really dive in. So I'm going to first bring up to the podium Mary Catherine Riker to speak to her story on this issue. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Mary Catherine Ricker. Um, as an educator, we are passionate about making sure our students are healthy and able to learn. I've spent my entire career working on student well-being. Right now, we are seeing a threat to kids' well-being 
and a mental health crisis affecting children and teens in classrooms across our state. This crisis has been exacerbated by the pervasive presence of data-driven and psychologically manipulative tech products and services in our kids' lives. This not only impacts mental health and well-being, it takes away from the time our students just a few years ago were, had spent reading a book or socializing with friends and from our students' ability to focus. The Minnesota Kids Code is how we can help. By restricting tech companies' ability to hook kids with addictive design, we can empower them to live the richer lives they deserve, filled with learning and growth. Unregulated tech represents a threat to all of our students. Minnesota's education community urges our educators to take action and please support the Minnesota Kids Code. Thank you. Uh, and with that, our next speaker for today will be uh, uh, Shama Tolbert and Shamal Henderson. I'll let them come to the podium. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Shama Tolbert. I am the mother of Shamal. Um, we are here to advocate the support of this legislation. This legislation is crucial for the safety and well-being of our children. In 2022, my daughter fell victim to a sex trafficker who exploited her weaknesses within the social media platform. A 30-year-old man connected to her by Facebook and posing as a friend lured her into a dangerous situation, leading her to, kid leading her to be kidnapped and sex trafficked. It was a very traumatic experience for our family, and we still haven't recovered. There should be safety measures. The platforms allow sex traffickers and pedophiles to prey on our kids. Parents alone can't keep their kids safe. Features like disappearing messages and secretive communication channels make it hard for us to monitor our children. I held off on allowing my daughter to have a phone. I monitored her social media. I did everything I was supposed to, and she was still not safe. The people who want to prey on our kids can reach them because the platforms are designed to let them do that. Social media online is more dangerous than any street in a bad neighborhood because these harms are happening in what are supposed to be safe spaces. Before my daughter got a phone, she went to the library to get on social media. You know, all the other kids were doing it. She said that's what they did. We thought they were studying. But they were online meeting with uh, adults meeting strangers who knew how to target them uh, through social media because of the security issue not being in place. Predators have more access to our children than we do because the platforms are set up to make these connections to make it so that our children cannot log out. Social media's addictive features keep my daughter online even though that's where she's been harmed. The constant exposure and overstimulation caused by explicit content, violence, and self-harm narrative has taken a toll on my daughter's mental, emotional, and physical well-being, as well as my whole household. Yet social media is not going away. We need you to make the platforms places where kids can use, the, use them the way they want. Because we're not asking to take, away, take them away. We're just asking to make it safe. You know, Facebook team, Snapchat team, something. Not be exposed to suicide stories and self-harm reels, things she's not looking for, but that are fed to her through the Video Explore or For You features of the sites where they send you images and videos you never even selected. Please put safety measures in these platforms. Please support HF 2257 to create a safer online environment for our children and to prevent what happened to my daughter from happening to another family. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jamel. I'm 16 years old and I live in a loving and protective home with my mom, stepdad, and my older brother. I'm here today to share a chapter of my life that I hope no one else has to go through. My journey in the digital world began when I was 12. At 12, I found myself navigating through so much negative online co content that frankly, no child should have to encounter. The digital world with its endless streams of information and suggested content began to introduce me to the darker corner of life. Drugs, 
violence, and cyberbullying. As these themes increased my online interactions, they started to impact my self-perception. The constant exposure led me to feel insecure, to question my appearance, my worth, and my identity. Was I skinny enough? Was I pretty enough? Did I have the right clothes? These questions filled by the, by the unrealistic standards and harmful content that I was exposed to began to shape my reality. By the age of 14, older men, strangers to me, began appearing as suggested friends on Facebook and other platforms. Naively, I accepted their requests, unaware of the intentions and blind to the dangers ahead. What followed was a period of grooming by older individuals, a time during which my life took a turn away from everything familiar, my family, my friends, and even the safety of my home. At 14, I was lured and kidnapped for a month by this individual, a 27-year-old man, posing as a peer to me. It has been a long journey to stand before you today. With the support of my family and team of great therapists by my side, I have walked the path filled with leading, I mean filled with healing and continuous struggle to reclaim my sense of self. And here I am, declaring all my all my might, no more. This should not, cannot be the reality for kids. In sharing my story, I don't want to just highlight the personal challenges I faced. I want to shed a light on the broader, uh, the broader of the situation of online safety and mental health for kids. We need to make safer online spaces where youth can explore, learn, and grow without being groomed, stalked, and preyed upon. The responsibility to create safe online environment for kids should not rest on the young shoulder of users like myself. Now at 16, I've been forced to mature beyond years, always planning for my safety in a digital world filled with unseen dangers. This burden is one that no child should bear. But seeing all of you here today, I am hopeful about the future. It's time for us to stand together to demand charge and, take, and make online platforms for ourselves and kids and every future generation. Thank you. Uh, this is an incredible example of a parent who did everything right and an incredibly courageous young woman to come here today and share a very deeply personal story. Um, our next speaker is Jose Perez, uh, who will come up to speak to you a little bit more. Thank you, Representative, and thank you to the amazing speakers. Thank you for taking time this morning to be in community with us all. My name is Jose Perez. I am the co-founder and chief troublemaker here at Good Trouble. At Good Trouble, we are a youth-led intergenerational movement focused on expanding the access and understanding of life-saving learning. We unite here today um, because of a groundbreaking, critical piece of legislation. In our journey of Good Trouble and ourselves, we have dedicated um, to invest in communities that are centered in belonging, mastery, independence, generosity. Um, and our experience have highlighted the pivotal importance of the real world and the digital. And there's never been clear signs that we must take protective actions immediately. Tragically, Minnesota has faced heart-wrenching crisis in 2022 alone. 835 young people were lost to suicide. 835 young people is much too many, and it deba demands action immediately for passage of the age-appropriate design, design. This legislation is not about restricting access to the digital world. Instead, it's about ensuring companies design online spaces as an even playing field and not a free-for-all, demanding a digital landscape that acknowledges and protects the vulnerability of our young people. 
at Good Trouble, we've witnessed the transformative potential of rich relationships, of engaging educational environments. And these positive influences should not extend only to the real world, but also to the online. It's time that we center and put our children's well-being first. And the Minnesota Age Appropriate Design Code is not about restricting that access, but it's doing exactly that of centering and protecting our young people. I urge all Minnesotans to come together for this incredibly important piece of legislation because it's not about just us, it's about our young people, it's not about the future, it's about our now. Thank you so much. Good morning. My name is Dr. Sheldon Berkowitz, and I'm a retired pediatrician. I'm also getting over a cold, so excuse my cracky voice. And I've spent the last 20 years of my career at Children's Minnesota. I'm also the past president of the Minnesota chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. <clears throat> Our state's pediatric community is proud to support the Minnesota Kids Code because it takes a smart approach to tackling the harms kids are experiencing online. We are seeing skyrocketing levels of mental and behavioral problems linked to social media in pediatric clinics all across Minnesota. This bill would help tackle the crisis by addressing these problems at their root and making youth privacy and child development a central consideration in developing any technology intended for kids. These privacy and design safeguards extend beyond social media, also covering AI, connected tech, and video games, recognizing the breadth and complexity of kids' interactions with the unregulated digital world. On behalf of the more than 1,000 members of the Minnesota chapter, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the children we care for every day, we urge our legislators to act on this bill and pass it into law. Minnesota's kids can't wait. Good morning, and thank you, Representative Bonner, for bringing forth this bill. My name is Bridget Noring. I live in Hastings, Minnesota. This is my son, Devin Noring. Yesterday marked four years since we lost Devin. He was just 19 when he died after he bought a pill containing fentanyl on Snapchat. Devin died at the height of the pandemic. He'd been suffering from migraines and dental pain before lockdown began and was under doctor's care. When his medical appointments got canceled, he became desperate to make the pain stop. After his death, I found out Devin had gone on Snapchat and found a drug dealer known for selling to local teens in our area. I now know that social media platforms are a primary place where kids purchase all types of drugs and that, while most of them are not sold as fentanyl, many of them contain it. After Devin died, I was in shock. I never thought this could happen to my family. We talked about our kids being careful online more than once. We monitored their social media usage. I've wondered every day for the past four years if there was something I could have done to save my son's life but I've gotten angrier every day, especially yesterday, because now I know the deck was stacked against us by the tech companies who prioritize making money off of kids rather than keeping them safe. Right now, our laws allow social media companies to have a business model where our children, their most vulnerable users, are also their most lucrative product. Their data is sold to advertisers, and the more they interact with the platform, the more detailed and therefore valuable their data becomes. That means tech companies are financially incentivized to design their products with addictive features to increase engagement. Design elements like nudges to engage in using data to recommend friends keep kids online longer. That's why companies keep these design features even when they connect a child user to an adult stranger who might sell them drugs or otherwise harm them. This shouldn't be allowed every other product our children touch, 
from the car seat we bring them home in to the fireproof pajamas that we dress them in at night are required to meet specific safety requirements to be sold for use by kids, our most protected consumers. Tech should not ever be the exception. Yet tech has been the exception because they're spending a lot of time and money behind the scenes trying to avoid regulation. Tech trade groups have refused to even come to the table with parents like us and parents on the kids code here in Minnesota. They think they're untouchable. And that's simply saying when their products kill yet another child, we're sorry for our loss is enough. It's not enough. It will never be enough. And I'm here on the day of my anniversary of my son's death because not one more child should have to die. Parents are fed up and the time for talking has passed and it's time for action. It's time to pass the Minnesota Kids Code. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Matthew. <coughs> Good morning. My name is Matthew Allaire and I am here representing Design It For Us a coalition of young people, digital natives, who have witnessed and experienced firsthand the catastrophic effects of a tech-based childhood. Every day, our generation is becoming more anxious, depressed, and suicidal due to the engagement-based business model of today's social media titans. Girls as young as 10 years old are experiencing eating disorders and unwanted sexual advances at a previously unprecedented scale. Young boys are being lured into microcosms of extremism and self-hatred online due to the loss of physical playtime in the real world. I alone cannot name every single harm that my generation has endured, but collectively, Design Up For Us has cultivated a deep understanding of what childhood looks like in the 21st century, and it doesn't look bright. The Minnesota Kids Code is one of the first pieces of state legislation that would meaningfully impede big tech's corrosive business model of data extraction and surveillance. By requiring social media companies to prioritize the well-being of underage users over profits and mandating that the maximum level of privacy is enabled by default for underage users, the Kids Code promises to interrupt the billion dollar flow of user data that has remained unimpeded for nearly 20 years. <clears throat> but the Kids Code won't stop there. If this bill passes, platforms that are likely to be accessed by children will be required by law to conduct impact assessments of their usage of underage user data. This bill flat out bans the non-consensual use of platform usage data to promote targeted ads to children, whether that be on Instagram or Google Classroom. The Kids Code promises to make the internet a safer place by wresting control of the online experience out of the hands of advertisers and into the hands of users. Now, we don't expect passing this bill to be easy. Whenever a new piece of legislation threatens to hamper the exploitative business model of surveillance advertising, Big tech steps in to control the narrative, calling attention away from the failures of their products and towards existing societal divides with the hopes that we will turn against each other and lose sight of our common goal. This is why I would like to make clear that the kids code works for everyone. It is not a censorship bill. This bill does not require platforms to collect more data on their users. If passed, it will not restrict access to LGBTQ content online. All users will still be able to access the content they choose to seek out. Design It For Us speaks for the first generation to have had their well-being sacrificed in support of big tech's bottom line. We of all people want to make sure we get regulation right this time around. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Eric Mishi. I'm the Executive Director of SAVE, Suicide Awareness, Voices of Education. First, um, thank you for all of you for sharing your journey and your story. Um, takes an incredible amount of courage to be here to share these stories as tragic as they are. For nearly 35 years, SAVE has worked across the country to prevent suicide. And as we stand here today, 
I can think of no greater way to help prevent suicide among Minnesota youth, and one step is to pass the Minnesota Kids Code. According to the CDC, suicide rates for persons aged 10 to 14 declined from 2000 to 2017, and then nearly tripled from 2007 to 2017. I'm sorry, declined from 2000 to 2007 and then nearly tripled from 2007 to 2017. Today, suicide is a leading cause of death for children ages 10 to 14, with it being the second leading cause of death for children 10 to 24. You have to ask yourself, what is contributing to this tragic increase in suicide death, suicidal ideation among today's youth? From 2006 through 2015, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Discord, and other social media platforms became public. You could call it a coincidence, or you could say where there's smoke, there's fire. The reality is there is a corresponding increase to suicidal ideation, mental health harm, and suicide among today's youth because of the unregulated nature of big tech social media platforms. It's time to fight fire with fire. It's time for the Minnesota legislature to pass the Minnesota Kids Code. Thank you. And with that, um, we have a few minutes left and I'm gonna open it up to questions uh, in case anyone has any for me or for any of our folks behind me. Representative, can you talk about, um, just imagine I'm 14, I'm trying to get a TikTok account um, if this bill passes, how would it look different getting an account with these protections versus what it looks like right now? Well, it's a little bit difficult to define just because um, this bill is about how they design the product, and I don't know what design choices um, a, a TikTok would make per se. Um, what I can tell you is that a bill very similar to this has been implemented in the UK for over two years now. I have a list of about 90 some features, in fact you can probably find it in my Facebook feed, that literally lists a never ending scroll of features that they have already made improvements across the pond to keep kids safer. What that means is that the experience that kids have overseas is significantly different and significantly safer than it is here. And I have to ask, do our kids deserve to be less safe? These are the same companies, the same platforms. We know that they can build and design better, safer products. We know that they can change their design choices to keep kids safer. They're choosing not to do it here. We are literally saying that we are going to monetize children before they have even reached the age of consent. And all of the folks behind me are a testament to what that has done. We've heard the facts, we've heard the figures. In fact, to be honest, I would suggest that everybody in this room has been hearing this pounded on them for years. And yet, year after year after year, nothing changes. We cannot keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. It's time for big tech companies to step up to the plate. They cannot have a pass anymore. Um, can you talk about some of the other proposals out there that also aim to regulate social media companies and how this would fit with some of those? Yeah, you know, and I mentioned a couple in my introduction. Um, there's the one that shuts down the internet for several hours in the evening. Um, you know, again, if, if a bicycle is broken, it's broken during the day, daylight hours as well as the evening hours, right? It doesn't change the fact that you haven't inherently changed the product or the design of that product to make it safer. Uh, we have the one that says, you know, you can't, you can't access the internet if you're under the age of 16. Now, one of the challenges there is, is it probably has to have some sort of a way to find out if someone is under the age of 16. Now, to be fair, a lot of tech companies can reasonably guess your age within about six months. So um, uh, it, it is likely that they already know, but the reality is kids are clever. 
right? Mm -hmm. You can try to suggest that they can't get on, but you know, we had a young woman up here today who, who demonstrated that exact point, right? Kids are clever. They will find a way. And it doesn't change the fact that we have to build products that are inherently safer. They should not be getting a pass. We do it with car seats. We do it with pajamas. We do it with ve motor vehicles. Any space where a child might be present, but we don't do it here. And more importantly, we allow things in the digital world we would never allow in a physical world, right? You would never say to your child, sweetie, when you go to the mall today and you see that scary looking guy in the corner at the food court, why don't you go have a nice chat with him, right? You would never ever say that. No parent in their right mind would allow that. And yet we allow it in the digital world. And, and I think the, the point behind the kids code is it is saying to companies, you need to set your privacy defaults at the highest level at, at the outset by default. It's saying you have to do a data privacy impact assessment. You need to weigh the risks and the harms to children and you need to mitigate those risks in the design of your product. And I will say this is probably the most generous bill to business as well that I have seen in the entire country because it says if you do that data privacy impact assessment, if you've done your best to mitigate the harms and make smart design choices for better, safer products, if the AG who's responsible for enforcing this suspects there's a problem, first they're gonna give you time to produce a list of those data privacy impact assessments. Then they're going to go and ask you for specific data privacy impact assessments based on their concern. They're gonna give you time to produce those. And if they dig into it and they find that you are in violation, they're gonna give you a 90 day right to cure. I don't know of very many places in the law where you get a veritable do over, right? The point of this bill is to build better, safer products and protect kids. It is not to punish companies. And for that reason, we are extremely generous to companies, to give them the opportunity to make it right. Now make no mistake, if they don't make it right, this bill has some teeth in it. And they, we, we can and will enforce it. There is no doubt about that. But I would like to believe, because I am a product of the tech world, I believe that tech has the promise to do great things. And I know the folks who build these products. I know they can build better products. I know they can build safer products. And so I truly believe that they can and will if they're put in a position where they need to do so. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, nope. everyone. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. All right. Thank you.